Hello students, welcome to Statics. Today we're going to do examples of unit conversions. This is coming from chapter one of Hibbler's Statics book. Our first example is example 1.1, where we're asked to convert two uh, kilometers per hour to meters per second. All right, so we need to convert from two kilometers an hour to meters per second. Now, the easiest thing for us to do is to stack up the dimensions and then slowly convert each term until we get meters per second. So how do we do that? First, we'll just write out what, we're, what we start with, which is two kilometers per hour. Let's go ahead and put, and let's go ahead and, and, and take the units and put them in numerator and denominator format where we have two times kilometers divided by hours. Now we need to go from kilometers per hour to meters per second. So what we'll do is we'll convert each of the units one at a time. Let's start with kilometers. Kilometers, one kilometer or kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters, right? So let's put that one kilometer on the denominator. Let's put 1,000 meters in the numerator. And then when we do the math here, we can cross out kilometers and end up with meters. Now let's do it in a chain and let's repeat the same uh, ratio format for hours. Well, one hour is equal to 3,600 seconds, all right? So let's put that ratio here. And by putting hours in the numerator, we're able to cross out hours, and then we're left with seconds. So now that we've kind of done this ratios and stacked up the change in dimensions, let's do the math. Let's take 200 times 1,000 divided by 3,600. We end up with 2,000 meters divided by 3,600 seconds plug that in our calculator, and we find 0 0.5555 five repeating meters per second as our final answer. Now, we see our, our answer here is in four significant digits. We want to round that to three, so we're using engineering notation. So let's take three points, one, two, three, and then let's circle our fourth uh, number there, our fourth number is a five. So we need to look at the third one. And the third one here is an odd number. So we're going to round up. So our final answer for this problem, we're going to round up to be 0. 0.556 meters per second. All right. So we've converted this uh, two kilometers an hour to meters per second. Final answer, go ahead and box it. All right, now let's move on to example two. In example two, we need to convert 300 pound force times seconds into SI units, into metric units. And we're given that one pound force is equal to 4.448 newtons. Newtons is a, is a unit of force uh, in SI. We need to do that conversion. Okay, well, let's take our 300 pound force times seconds, and then let's go ahead and break it out. We see we're doing pounds times seconds, so there's nothing, there's no numerator denominator to, to place there, but we're going to do our same ratio approach as the last problem, and we're going to put the conversion as a, as a numerator denominator, where we can say that this pound force times seconds is a numerator term, so we'll put pounds in the denominator so that they can cancel each other out. We were given that one pound is equal to 4.448 newtons, so we'll put that 4.448 newtons in the numerator. Now when we do our conversion, the pounds will cancel out and we'll be left with newtons times seconds, right? So let's do the math, let's do the 300 times 4.448. We end up with 1,334.5, and then let's take our units, newtons times seconds, 
And there we go. We've got our answer, right? Now, we always want to uh, uh, do what we did in our previous example, which is we need to uh, uh, get our answer at the right number of significant digits and in the right units. In this example, how do we do that? Well, let's take the answer we have. The answer we have has five significant digits, right? One, three, three, four point five. That's five significant digits. We need to cut it down to three. Let's start at our decimal point and let's move one, two, three positions over. We'll end up with 1.3345 times 10 to the three, right? 1.3345 times 10 to the three. All right, so that's still a lot of significant digits. The next thing we want to do is we want to look at our units and, and take that fourth significant digit and determine, is it greater than five or less than five? In this case, it's four, which is less than five. So that means we're going to round down. And we're rounding down, so our answer will be 1.33 times 10 to the three newtons times seconds. Right? So that's our answer. But we still don't have our answer in the most simplified form because we still have this 10 to the 3 term sticking out. So how do we get rid of it? Well, we use our scale, our scale that goes uh, uh, from millimeters and centimeters. Uh, uh, we, can, we can do megameters. We can do gigameters. Our, our SI unit scale. And from that scale, we'll find that 10 to the 3 means kilo, right? So we can replace that 10 to the 3 with kilonewtons times seconds. And so that's what we did. So that our final answer is 1.33 kilonewtons times seconds. All right, so let's box that as our final answer. Done with that example. Now let's do example 1.3. This example, we are asked to rewrite the term below into an appropriate prefix. We're given 50 millinewtons times six giganewtons. We need to do the math and then simplify it into an appropriate prefix. That's a little bit of work for us to do, but let's, let's do it. Let's work through it. First, we'll take the term we're given and we'll write it out, 50 millinewtons times 6 giganewtons. And then we'll replace the milli and the giga with their base 10 value. Milla is 10 to the negative 3, and giga is 10 to the 9, right? So we replace those. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the numbers that we have and add them up, or I mean, and do the math, do the multiplication. 50 times 60, that gets us 300. 10 to the negative three times 10 to the nine is going to give us 10 to the six. And Newtons times Newtons is gonna give us Newtons squared, right? So now we have 300 times 10 to the six times Newtons squared. And that's not the simplest form. Right? That's, that is not the simplest form that we can get. We've got a little bit of work to do. Now, one thing we can note, or, or one thing we should note, is that whenever we're dealing with a term, for instance, here we say a number is in kilonewtons squared. Well, that kilonewton squared means in brackets, kilo times newtons, both to the power squared, or uh, since kilo is 10 to the 3, if we break it out, it would be 10 to the 6 times Newton squared, right? So the prefix is a separate number from the unit itself. That's what we're seeing here. So if that is the case, then we, when we have 300 times 10 to the 6 times Newton squared, that's equivalent to 300 times kilonewtons squared, right? Simple as that. So we've got our third example done. 
Let's do one more example for this video. And this is an example that comes from our homework. This is problem 1.11 from the book. And in this problem, we're asked to express the following uh, equation with three significant digits and using the proper units. And the equation that we're given is uh, 354 milligrams times 45 kilometers divided by 0 0.0356 kilonewtons. That is the equation that we're given, and we need to convert that into a number with three significant div digits and proper units. Well, let's take what we're given here and let's rearrange it. So let's actually take that slash and make a numerator denominator, right? Let's replace the prefixes milla, kila, and kila with their base 10 value, which is 10 to the negative 3, 10 to the 3, and 10 to the 3. And you know, now we just have you know, all numbers, and then we have uh, grams times meters divided by newtons, right? That's the units that we get out. So now that we have everything in numbers, let's put in our calculator. 354 times 10 to the 3 times 45 times, uh, you know, well, times 10 to the negative 3 times 45 times 10 to the 3 divided by 0 0.0356 times 10 to the 3. All right, so we got all our numbers. Plug in our calculators. We get 447.472 grams times meters divided by newtons. All right. So that is pretty straightforward. The last step that we need to do, because our, our units are, are pretty good, is to do the rounding off. We want to get three significant digits. So let's go ahead and uh, take and identify three. One, two, three significant digits. Our fourth number is the number four. It's less than five. So we're going to round down. So our final answer should be 447 grams times meters per newton. Pretty straightforward, that example, right? So uh, we've learned how to do unit conversions. Uh, and while doing it, we also had to look at our significant digits and look at the prefixes in, in front of numbers. Now, we're going to have to do this throughout the semester. Every problem we get isn't going to be in the perfect units. And the final answer, you're going to be asked, put this in newtons or put this in kilonewtons or so on. So it's going to be important to get as much practice as possible early on. Uh, so make sure to do your homeworks and try to pick a couple extra problems from the book just to practice. And to go along with that, we have an individual activity. And this individual activity, you're asked to take this equation and simplify it, get it into the appropriate units, and round to three significant digits. So go ahead and start this activity. Pause the video right now. Start this activity. Calculate your answer. And then I'm going to show you the true answer, and we're going to go through the answer for this activity, for this exercise. So hopefully you've, you've paused and we're ready to look at the answer. So the answer to this problem, we've got this number of 0 0.00453 megagrams times 201 milliseconds, right? It's a weird calculation, but we wanna go ahead and get into right significant digits and the right units. Let's start with taking what we have and writing it out. Let's write out the number and let's replace the prefixes of mega and milli with their base 10 values, where mega is 10 to the 6 and milli is 10 to the negative 3, right? Now we have everything in terms of its numbers and very basic units. Plug these numbers in our calculator, right? We end up with 910.53 grams times seconds, right? And then the next thing we need to do 
is we need to round. We need to round this number to three significant digits. Let's count out three digits. One, two, three, so 910. And then let's evaluate the fourth digit. Our fourth digit is exactly five. So we need to look at the third digit and that'll tell us if we round up or round down. Our third digit here is a zero. That means we need to round up. So our final answer is 911 grams times seconds, all right? So we solved this problem. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward one. Uh, and really we're gonna have to do this, this process with every problem that we do in statics. So I hope that you under, un understand uh, how we did this. Now, if you do have some confusion about how we do this rounding part, how we do rounding, then make sure you look at the other example video, the one that's before this particular example. And then if also, if you have challenges in um, looking at the prefixes, what's mega, what's milli, what's giga, and so on, look up SI units on Google and, uh, uh, and you will be able to find a table that shows you what milli's base 10 is, what mega's base 10, giga, and, and so on, right? Uh, and hopefully over time, as you do more engineering problems, you'll just automatically know. You know, it'll just become a part of your skill set, identifying what those pre prefixes mean. So that's our example for today. Uh, make sure if you have any questions, to leave comments down in the YouTube comment section. Subscribe to this channel so you can get all of the new videos. And I will see you in the next one.